Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flyout News. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is a guest video of the Jim Sniper 2 from uh, uh, Angel of Death, a.k.a. All with Sonic. Um, he uh, said this one was good for uh, counter-sniping and good positioning, so we're all going to watch together because I uh, am doing this live as I tend to do. I, you know... This is one of the reasons I uh, tend to take videos from, uh, as I said, uh, from people I trust, because I often don't watch them until I can sit down to narrate them, just because I uh, I like the surprise, honestly. So, let's see, there's an Alex and a Camphor over there. The Camphor is a great target uh, for him because, oh man, that has no health left. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, and the pilot knew it, he escaped, but... Uh, yeah, the camper's a great target for a gym sniper too, because they have very, very low defense. If if you're if you're standing still in a camper, you're gonna die. You you just have to move. And that same sand dune gets me all the time. The way it just the way you can just slide down it, it's uh, horrifying. But okay, yeah, good uh, extra shot in on that gun cannon that uh, another team member uh, stunned, and it is nearly dead. And unfortunately, I think either someone else got it or it disconnected because I couldn't even see it. Maybe it was just like over the hill or something. But I don't know. Either way, the gun cannon is uh, not there at the moment. So, oh, I think it snuck way over to the left. Waiting for the rifle to reload. I still have not uh, gotten the uh, cooldown part I'm, or the beam charging part. I'm thinking about it because... Faster charging beam rifle for a couple of things sounds really good. The Jim Sniper Custom being one. but And, of course, yeah, Gelgoog. I love that Gelgoog. But also, if you see this when it goes up, like before before uh, 3 p.m. Eastern on Friday, the uh, A-Type Gelgoog, the 350-point uh, one, is currently in the recycle shop for 70 tickets. So, I believe that's also new to the recycle rotation. So, that is... That is really good. I'll, I'll just tell you, it is it is a good 350 point machine, and I think it comes with its beam rifle. And yeah, it, it can wreak some real havoc with that beam rifle. That is a strong gun. I will not be surprised if it is ultimately nerfed in some way, but I will have had fun while it happened, while it was available. Uh, good uh, pursuit stoppage there. Goof Custom is uh, taking point, which is a good place for Goof Customs to be. And, let's see, that's a good shot. And between uh, uh, between him and his teammate, yeah, that person is dead. Stop that Alex cold. Alex's sometimes have fragile legs, so sniping those from the feet up is, a, is generally a good practice if you can do it. Also, since they do have that kind of uh, almost zeonic bell-bottom deal going on there, they're a relatively easy target. And there's the gun cannon, which the Jim Sniper 2 has the advantage of being able to stun a lot more rapidly than a gun cannon can. Gun cannon can do a lot more damage given half the chance, but it, the Sniper 2 can move and fire fast enough, it doesn't always get the chance. So, And it's down. Yeah, so, like he said, definitely good counter sniping going on here. Good work. See, that has maneuver armor, so, and I think it's an exam, so yeah, he did not stop it, but... It's dead now. So they've got a pretty solid lead, about 3,000 points worth. And, well, 2,800 if you're being picky. But, uh, yeah, so some uh, his team's playing well, and there's some... And, he yeah, he is, he is sniping really well here. Not getting too close to things unless, you know, somebody uh, comes up on him. Keeping his distance, keeping a clear line of sight, and just waiting for good targets. That... I'm surprised he missed that, but, you know, a good uh, good opportunity he took there when that Alex, br uh, you know, fell out of its dash for a second. Because, you know, there's that just that little hesitation, and that's a good place to land a shot if you can. So, you know, most of the principles he's using here to snipe of when to shoot and how to shoot also, you know, apply to my Gelgoog beam rifle play. It's just that you can apply some of them while you're uh, moving, because the beam rifle can be fired while walking. Not while boosting, but at least while walking. It's not a lot of weapons that can be used while boosting. I always forget that the Juagu's uh, beam cannons can be. But, yeah, so... 
see, and that is a, uh, there's an exam type suit there. Good kill, uh, stopped a bomb from being, uh, planted, that's excellent. Made good use of his reload time, and his team did a great job of keeping that blue destiny off of him. Um, while we're speaking of bombs, though, just a, a subject that has been, uh, been kind of getting to me the last few days in various public rooms. I want to advise against, and, you know, feel free to debate the merits of this in, in the comments. I'd like to hear other uh, perspectives. I would like to advise people against just... Oh, man, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Is he going to... No, the guy got away, I think, but... I was hoping he was going to be able to snipe that guy with his uh, ballistic sniper rifle. That would have been cool. But... And it was cool. Very nice. But yeah, I want to advise against bombing the base at the very beginning of the round. Because generally, the points that your team gives up getting slaughtered while they are down a person do not make up for the uh, do not make up what the uh, base will get for you. It, it's better to wait until the enemy team has you know been knocked around a little bit, has been split up some until. Until there's an opening, wait for an opening with that, because if there's no opening, your team is going to lose an awful lot of points while you're setting that up. And it's just not worth it. I have never seen, when someone bombs the base at the beginning, I've almost never seen the enemy team so much as react, because they know that if they just uh, press their numerical advantage, they will get those points back and then some. So, that is my take on the situation, and, you know, Feel free to disagree, please. Let's you know. Let's talk about this in the comments. Um, you know, I I that you know gameplay strategy is always something that I feel like should be up for debate. So if you if you've got an alternate take on it, or if you've got a good suggestion for how teams should react to a member you know wandering off to bomb, what what's a good defensive way to play while that's happening? Um, please, you know, let us all know, because it, it, it's a subject that I think needs some uh, some work on both sides. Ah, I'm still on the side of not bombing, but... Let's see, good defensive tackle there. Unfortunately, I think one of his teammates tagged him, but... They may have tagged him, but they tagged the Blue Destiny more, because it is no longer a problem. With 30 seconds, they have a 6,000-point lead, plus... Uh, 6,025, I think it is, but yeah. And yeah, again, that camphor is a great target. The maneuver armor stopped it from being stunned, but 3,000 damage a shot is considerable. So it's about, and it's all been uh, shots to the legs, so... Unfortunately, nothing he has is charged. And that is one of the problems. You do 300 damage to a vehicle by walking over it. So if you walk over that tank or your team walks over that tank too many times, it can explode and stun you, so be very careful with that. So, yeah, that was a great round. He did uh, good work. His team backed him up very well. Or he backed up his team, however you want to look at that. Either way, they worked very well together, and he got top damage, which, you know, well-deserved. Good sniping. And that is going to do it for today's Gundam Battle Operation 2. We will be back tomorrow with more. So till next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later!